Here we go. Hello. Hello. This is Lindsay Huddleston here uh, with Sports Psychology Solutions and my partner in crime, Keith Keys to the New Crib, Tate. And we also uh, have a great, great opportunity to welcome our first official guest on Coach's oh, Culture. Oh, first. First. Yeah, we told you, man. This is the thing. You know, we had to change the setup, had to get a new set just to welcome a great person I've had the pleasure of knowing since I've transitioned to the Lansing area from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, really good brother. Everywhere you go, everyone's going to say great things about him. Uh, very much light on his feet, soft touch, hard in the paint, uh, <laughs> and definitely, most importantly, a fierce competitor. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, knowing you, and I'm happy to have you on the show to share some of your great, great life experiences and more of who you are. And I'll let our good friend uh, Keith Tate uh, share some more, yeah, too. Jody Clemens, man. Obviously, a uh, real quick background. When I was in high school, or before high school, I heard Jody name just from football, being on the basketball court, you know, went to school, scholarship, all that type of stuff, uh, D1. Um, but he obviously didn't know who I was, you know. Mm. Um, he was the big name around here. I'm just, you know, keep tape. Mm -hmm. However, going back a few episodes when I started coaching at Waverly, right. um, opportunity presented itself to volunteer. Jody was already there. Mm -hmm. uh, JJ Darden at Waverly on JV is okay. coaching. Okay. Uh, so that's when we started, you know, obviously connecting and, and so on and so forth. And right. um, just built up, a, you know, a good relationship and friendship. He's someone I feel like I can uh, definitely call for whether it's life advice, coaching advice. Sure. Or someone I definitely, uh, you know, respect. And what's even more crazier is that while he was coaching basketball, volunteering, you know, mm -hmm. he was also coaching at Lansing Catholic Central for mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. so, so football, then basketball. Sure. Yeah. No breaks. Sure. Yeah. Wow. No breaks. Right and, through. Uh, Lansing Catholic Central was, you know, successful, still a successful football program. Mm -hmm. So they had deep runs in the playoffs, went to, you know, uh, for a field, mm -hmm. for a championship game, all That's that great. stuff. So then he's trying to do both. Football and basketball at the wow. same time, wow. which is definitely something that I thought he was crazy to do. <laughs> Bo Jackson, the coach, huh? yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, just welcome to the show. And, and Keith, I think it was great that you can share because you've had this experience. And for him to already be out there when you were trying to ascend and you see someone who's there, has a great reputation. He said it was like he he, he was the man and you come around like, get out of here, kid. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just joking. But no, that's great. Jody, so we wanted to have you on uh, to talk about some of your experiences, but just tell us uh, from the things you've experienced and, and what you've done, what's important for you on a platform like this? Uh, well, most most importantly, like to get the messages out, you know, to kids, um, the next generation. I've uh, always focused on who's up next. Who's up next? Okay. Who's up next? So it's very important for kids to kind of take some of the advice that a lot of us, you know, old veterans now that we old used to veterans, get. Veterans, uh, OG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very important now uh, for these kids to understand that we've been through it. We understand, uh, you know, the challenges that present themselves on a day to day basis, even more so than when we were growing up. And so now we're just, you know, trying to share that wealth and try to, try to keep this thing going. You know? Keith, I know you were going to ask uh, Jody about some experience at Lansing uh, Catholic, but I just want to ask you, Jody, before you share with Keith things about that, you know, what is it like when you look at this generation of athletes, you know, young people? people, you know, what's your impression of them now compared to what your experience is like coming up as a teen and athlete? Um, I think a lot of them are misinformed. Mm, misinformed. Yeah, um, bad advice um, oh, coming wow. through, uh, the, the down the ways. Uh, a lot of people try to take advantage of the kids, whether uh, mm. financially, sure. Uh, Try to take uh, take advantage of parents. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They're just getting a lot of bad advice, sure. you know, and sure. and they're not seeking out the people, like I said, who have been through it, who have experienced it, who are still, you know, in the pipeline. Uh, they they don't want to take that advice from mm -hmm. you know us who've been through the struggle and understand it. So mm -hmm. I think uh, on on a bigger scale, uh, we need to you know kind of bring that back to Lansing. Sure, um, you know start home growing our talent so that we can you know put them on a platform because 
as you can see, our uh, recruiting scholarship offers for kids in the Lansing area is down, probably at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. And uh, a big part of that is because a lot of these kids are misinformed. So we got to do a better job doing that. Information is important. So yeah. as I uh, segue to Keith, you know, you, you talk about being over at Lansing Catholic Central. You know, Keith, you were going to ask him yeah. some questions about what was happening with that. Uh, a couple of different things, I guess, that goes uh, along the lines of what, what you were just discussing. Mm -hmm. Kids. Um, so this is kind of a two-part question, and we'll try to get it all together. Mm -hmm. With the kids, what are the kids at, like, Lansing Catholic Central, are they being told different things um, there mm. than the, you know, the, the other part of Lansing community, you know, as far mm. as getting them um, going? Is that from coaching, parents, administration? How is that uh, affecting the student-athletes? And then the other thing I wanted to discuss, um, just based off of a um, – you were part of a, a very successful program, mm -hmm. um, which me and Lindsay have discussed before about consistency, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about setting the standard, expectations, expectations, mm -hmm. that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I guess what were some of the uh, key things that you took away from, or, or that you feel that you brought to the program, that either you brought and sort of took away from the program, of how they maintain that consistency of uh, excellence over the years? Okay, um, I know that was a lot to yeah. Spill. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, he you touched my memory. You, you know, right, I took too many hits right, to the head. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I would say, uh, first off, um, I don't. I don't really think the kids over there are more informed. Okay. Should I say? I just believe that it's just a different culture because a lot of the times. Um, you know, when you're in the city, you know, a, a lot of us, you know, we want to make it out athletically. That's just like our thing. You know, sure. we don't really sure. say, hey, we, we want to be doctors or lawyers or something of that nature. Most of us grow up in the city. We're competitive. We play ball. And Very much that's like, to that. yeah, that's that's pretty much like our main goal. Uh, there's really no uh, initial plan or fallback plan if it mm -hmm. doesn't happen. It's just we just kind of just living in Go the moment. Up. Some of us get lucky. Others don't, you know. Uh, there is more focused on the education point. Uh, for me, it was really difficult because I was coaching kids who treated it as a hobby, and I didn't know how to deal with that. Oh wow! You know, I'm like, this wow. is this is my life. This is what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're saying I don't really need this. Yeah, I'm it. going to school yeah, regardless. Like, so like, it's not gonna feed me. I'm exactly gonna right. Wow. And so it was a different transition. It really helped me broaden my horizons as a coach when I you know was coaching in the city and then I went to went over to coach with them it was definitely an eye open experience for me and it taught me a lot uh, first the, the two part of the question uh, the organization you know what I mean organization skills uh, Jim Mahern over there does a really good job organizing he gave us our calendar what we're going to do from oh, wow. this this month this month this month this month so there's no you can plan around it yeah everybody knows what you're doing it's not like anything is improv or nothing like that we going this is what we're rocking with this is off season we're doing this like soon as the season was over we're having a meeting uh once we have that meeting we establish the roles in the weight room who's going to be there this week who's going to be there this week um uh, so it was very very detailed and i and I, I wasn't used to that uh the second thing was the preparation part of it too um hern was very diligent with his film studies and i study film as a football player but it was different transition as a coach hmm. what you're studying for um, so I had to learn uh, his way of preparation and, and, and kind of you know tailor it to me and then the, the third part was the versatility uh, to coach you know when I was coaching at Sexton my first two years there were a lot of kids who were just naturally gifted mm -hmm. like I didn't have to work that hard to coach them sure. because they were just blessed gifted athletes my, mo my most important thing was just trying to keep them out of trouble Sure. Making sure that their grades were straight because, like, you got the athletic ability, and once I teach you this high level stuff, if you soak it up, mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna be really good. So you were mentoring. Oh yeah, big time. Mm -hmm. uh, over there, I was I had to go down to the finest points of coaching. You wow. know what I mean? And oh, wow. uh, Coach Lyle McFadden, rest in peace, the legend over at Sexton. He taught me the most important lesson was he said, Jody, these kids aren't you. <laughs> They're not gonna do what you did. Mm -hmm. You need to learn that early. So when you're yelling at them, they're not you. <laughs> you're not wondering why. Right. Magic Johnson had a tough time coaching. Yeah, it was difficult. It's or, difficult.
difficult. Or, or they said like Iron Man when they found him in a cave. Like I'm not Tony Stark in a cave. I can't do that. I can't do what Iron Man did. They right. Like you. Exactly. Well, exactly. that's great that you've been able to do that. Yeah. You know, when you talk about uh, young people and having those different experiences, one thing I wanted to touch on that also goes with the the culture's culture that we've been talking about. You as a young African American male, mm-hmm. uh, you know, growing up and having an urban experience and having success with your urban experience and going to what we can call maybe a more mainstream type experience when you go to a Lansing Catholic Central. You talked about, you know, the uh, the impact, you know, being there was. How was it for you to transition because you knew you had to transition with your coaching style. How did that affect your professional relationships with some of the people that you were coming in contact, especially if you were basically a minority in an all-majority type setting? It was really difficult at first mm-hmm. because they didn't understand how to take me. And I came in this young, fiery, intense, you know, coach, kind of like Keith. You know what I mean? I, like, I, I call oh, him the, the pit bull. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right now, like, no but he's, he's starting to, you know, as he goes on, he's starting no to, doubt. you know, rein it no, back in. No doubt. But that's how we kind of all start because that's what we know mm-hmm. you know what I mean so I, that style a lot of parents didn't understand you know how to relate to me wow. in that manner because they don't they don't yell at they don't yell at their kids you know what I mean or wow. they you know it's, it's a different you know and form like, of raising it's not like mm-hmm. uh, uh, they can miss you walking in the door they right. see you coming they're like whoa right and so once they got to know me it kind of they, they begin to love me because I was starting to teach them, uh, the kids, the importance of hard work, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it was on the football field or in the classroom. And that all translates to, you know, life, period. I still have a really good relationship, a relationship with a lot of those kids uh, that I was able to reach. Even the parents, when they see me out, you know, it's all handshakes and uh, just, you know, love hugs because, you know, we accomplished a lot and and we won a lot of games over there. And they're still, you know, continuing the win games over there and so it was different like I said but once uh, they got you know wind of what I was trying to do mm-hmm. and how I was trying to push their kid mm-hmm. beyond football then you know they understood I think that real quick I think the yeah, biggest sure. thing with that though is um, obviously knowing Jody and everyone a lot of people knowing Jody people can tell when it's a genuine hmm. um, uh, care or right. genuine just love and passion for not only the sport but mm-hmm. for your child right. mm-hmm. and, that, and that child that player seeing that you actually care you know obviously you want them to do good athletically because that's what you're kind of there for specifically but mm-hmm. they also how's your grades doing are you in the weight room right. work harder if you want to beat this guy out if you want to beat this team and um, kind of real quick just one of the things I really focused on last year with my team and the players was Let's try to like excel at every area. Mm. Excel at excel at every area. Mm -hmm. Just when he just mentioned how you know. over there, they're already thinking about their careers. They're like, I'm playing basketball or football just because. Right, you know, something to do. Like, I love it, or right. my parents kind of want me to play. That they're already focused on other things for college. Mm-hmm. And, um, it just got me thinking about how I kind of try to instill that in kids last year, specifically. Like, hey, you got to want to excel in every single thing. Every area. Every day. Every mm-hmm. area. Whether it's you being a, a, like say, a child to your to your parents, mm-hmm. respectful, a student, things of that nature. And so it just, that really just hit me where mm-hmm. it's like man like that's where our focus really needs to keep on yeah. um, getting into these kids is that your plan A should be your education mm-hmm. you know I always harp on grades and so on and so forth but right. education career college that's your plan A right. your plan B is athletic where yeah. you said earlier yeah. usually it's flip flop like man I'm trying to get a scholarship for basketball or football or right. whatever it's right. like actually us thinking about career opportunities absolutely you know you raise an excellent point Keith and you both do because you talk about you know sports is so attractive though especially when you make the reference to urban uh, experience when you mm-hmm. see quote unquote limited options you right. see the other professionals the doctors the lawyers who could be making just as much as the NBA or NFL athletes at right. one point with what they do but I, I think it's important that despite it being so attractive we still can try to find time to give it so you talked about the misinformation give me another um, response to how you looked at dealing with being a young man at a 
place like that coaching and at the time you say they didn't get you no so how did that make you feel did that impact your confidence professionally in dealing with the coaching staff did you have a sponsor who supported you through that time or someone that said hey I know things may be a little bumpy in your transition and you mean to do well you know but 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 this is what's going on this is how we do it. how was that for you um I, I would say this once any athlete achieves a certain success a success uh high level so i was able to go over on to indiana university mm -hmm. and have a pretty solid career mm -hmm. um one thing i can tell you about next level athletics um it teaches you mental toughness now, there we go. that's number one mm -hmm. it's going to teach you mental toughness mm -hmm. there's not a thing that you feel you cannot do mm -hmm. once you reach a certain level of uh success sure. and so with that being and said when it came to coaching I, I already knew that it was going to be a difficult road mm -hmm. but I already knew I was going to grind I already knew I was going to put in the work and I already knew at the end of the day I'm I'm buying and investing in myself sure as a investing coach yourself. that's what I do mm -hmm. you know what I mean it was no different from high school um, when I was in high school a lot of people don't know that I only played one year of high school football Wow! to go on to be a division one football player yeah sure and, they, and kids think they can do that and I'm like right. you don't understand right. like I put in that work right. like that entire time of high school I just decided when I was a senior to show up and play football right. but I had already put the ground and the foundation work into being a, a high level athlete sure and you got kids saying I'm gonna do the Jody Clement plan I'm just gonna do one year <laughs> right and it's, like, it's not gonna work out for you man <laughs> imagine how let's see if you were a coach over at section at the time mm -hmm. how pissed you would be if Jody Clemens was walking through the hallways and he's not playing oh and he couldn't get him I, and he couldn't get him no we've had that I've had guys Damn. who went to the next level and just did that but no that's good that you got the experience and came back you know if I could talk about what you're saying about the experience with some athletes yeah. they see sports and I gotta get it I gotta get that professional lifestyle right. I gotta take care of my family you know the real right. hardcore stories and compare that to an experience like Lansing you know Catholic where you know many were saying well it's a choice whether I choose to play and I probably don't have to play and I probably won't right. because of that. Now let's transition when we talk about pulling from the headlines. Uh, Ed Oliver, um, you know, a player for University of Houston that uh, made what they're calling Jacket Gate. Right. This experience <laughs> where, you know, potential first round draft pick uh, mm -hmm. whose um, status has been teetering based on these things happening and his injury, of course. He's been out four weeks with an injury. Mm -hmm. You know, his coach, uh, Major Applegate, what a name. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a name for a story. You got to have a story going on with a name like Major Applegate. You know, Apple White. Apple White. Apple White. White, excuse me. All right, the gate. Thank you. The same, same piece. Let's keep it going. So he attempts to take uh, the jacket off of, you know, the player saying it's a team rule and you and I kind of clarify later not an NCAA rule but this is a team rule right. that as a player uh, you can't have a jacket on if you're not playing in the game am I correct? Yeah. yeah. So uh, going forward uh, he proceeded to respond in a very demonstrative way he clearly was upset clearly was angry and it definitely was a thing and the last thing I'll say as I get your perspective on this is I found it very interesting how the coach was extremely calm and under pressure uh, calm and very relieved as he walked to the locker room despite this player you know, menacing and grimacing and just doing all the things that you hate to see happening, you know, with the player and the coach. Right. Yet and still, uh, this person still may, you know, go to the NFL as one of the top draft picks and move on. So what's your take on that, Pete? Uh, first, the response from the kid was wrong. Let's just say that. Okay. Uh, you can't respond like that. He's got enough on the line That's true. that you have to think about the big picture. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. With these general managers from the NFL. Obviously, we're in a very sensitive state in the NFL with anybody rebelling. That's a good point. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you got to understand. Oh, this, this is post Kaepernick. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Wow, so, you, 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 you got to understand that. So, you, mm -hmm. you got to really, you know, keep it calm. But as a coach, why is this a rule? That's number one. Like, why is this a rule that somebody... In a rule book somewhere? Yeah. Why is this a team rule when... It's cold, and guys who aren't playing are the coldest. <laughs> and he's been in that warm coat for a while. Yeah. And take it off. Yeah, that to me it was just a, a, a petty rule in some in some way. It seems as if he's trying to punish or belittle people who are injured, which does happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it does happen in high level sports because coaches, they're you know, hey. 
they're making money. Mm-hmm. They don't make money mm-hmm. to lose games. And then you're a high profile player. <laughs> His job's on on the line when his high pro- profile players aren't playing. You know what I mean? So obviously that that's the you know the other side of that too. And I mean it's just I mean it's it's kind of hard to put it. You got to kind of really be in the in the mindset to understand. I I was injured going into my second year. Oh wow! Uh, at Indiana, when you're when you're injured, you don't you don't have any value. Mm-hmm. Basically, you just kind of an outcast. Mm-hmm. Your teammates. You're already a number. Yeah. Man, your, mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. your teammates got love for you, but you, you know, got love on the low like Yeah, yeah. yeah they you, go another your, way. Your teammates love you. You know what I mean? And they and they try to keep you you know mentally engaged. Sure. But that coach is like. Hey, what's going on? I had a coach ask me. He says, uh, uh, what's going on with your situation? I'm like, you know, the situation, that surgery, I'm trying to get back, you know what I mean? He says, uh, well, you look like a fast healer. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a fast healer. I'm like, okay. That's funny as that. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, it he is. said you like, look wow. like a fast healer, and I'll never forget that conversation. And then uh, he was like, well, if you don't know. Uh, how did he put it? He said, yeah, if you don't know when you're coming back, then who knows? And I looked at him with a straight face because I was getting ready to get angry. And I said, God. He's like, we'll talk to him then. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is a real conversation. So at that point, I was I understood early mm. what it meant that you had no value when you were hurt. And so oh. try to stay healthy. That's number one. Uh, and and do everything you need to do because it's a real sensitive situ- situation. Let's just say that. So what happens when, you know, that reality check comes in? You say you were in your sophomore season, as you said. Yep, yeah, going and, just redshirted. And and, you know, uh, you know, did you say, hey, I got to figure out what my future is going to be like? But more importantly, did you feel that you can make your future what you want it to be as opposed to someone saying football is all I think that I have? I never came into college with that mentality. OK. So it was never an issue. Okay. When I was in high school, I never said I wanted to be a Division One athlete. That was never the goal. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that never, ever was a goal of mine. My only goal was that whatever I did, I wanted to be great. Sure. Mm-hmm. And said... And I said, if I'm great at something, mm-hmm. I'm going to end up where I need to be. Wow. So if you look back on the, you know, my high school career, just a quick backstory. Mm-hmm. Um, I did the discus mm-hmm. and I'm the greatest disc- discus thrower in Sexton history. The record still stands. Still and stands. at the end of the, my high school career, I had offers to go do shot or uh, you know shot putting discus track and field sure. in college uh, at the time our sack record held by my big brother uh, Damian Gregory mm-hmm. was 15 at Sexton mm-hmm. I wanted to beat that so I did so I got 16 mm-hmm. so at that time I was the greatest in sacks at Sexton High mm-hmm. and the phone was ringing off the hook Wow. For colleges, and wow. it was simple as that. I just wanted to be great, so that's what I tell kids. That's why I call my workouts "Dare to Be Great," mm-hmm. because if you're reaching to be great at something, everything else, academics, mm-hmm. if you're great at that, everything else is going to line itself up. Right. I didn't go into college with that mindset that I wanted to make the NFL. Mm-hmm. Everything was a step. So after that first year of you know getting injured and then finally starting to play and then starting 33 straight games in the Big Ten. Wow. By the end of the career, I'm like, now I got an opportunity to play in the NFL. I've, right. I've built that. You know what I mean? It didn't happen. I ended up getting hurt in minicamp, but hey, I, I made it oh, yeah. a lot farther than most people. Oh, yeah. I'm blessed, sure. you know, and now I give it back to the young, right. you know, the young up and coming generation. But that was never my issue <laughs> about Man, that's it. Wonderful. Yeah, that's yeah. It's wonderful to hear that story. I think it's important that how, you know, your your attitude towards being great and as you, as you take on obstacles and challenges or just whatever you do will carry over to other parts of your life. And I think so many of our young people, Keith, and I love to hear your opinion on this too, are looking looking for a path to follow and and a lot of it may just be insert here and social media has its role as we absolutely know right the misinformation you talked about right you know kids not even knowing how the thing goes whatever it may be right and all the other outside influences you know uh, keith you're with the young people every day like each of us are you know what's your perspective as far as where they are and and as well as what jody is sharing and what they can be doing next 
to get ready for next level transition like many of your young men will be doing right well, one of the things uh, that you know I don't want to be unfair to every young person okay you know, there's there's exceptions to the rule uh-huh. no absolutely right. um, I definitely think real quick is that Due to social media, due to the 15 second clips, the 30 mm-hmm. second clips on Instagram, Twitter, highlight um, workout videos mm-hmm. that I come in for an hour once a week and I'm putting in work. I'm putting in work. Sure, sure. That's not the, that's not you daring to be great. That's not at all. Putting in the time. Not at all. For, you know, the energy needed. Mm-hmm. Um, whether that's for academics, athletically, mm-hmm. you playing a, a band instrument, you know, mm-hmm. any of those things. Sure. You know? um, so one of the things that, you know, is very important as we've discussed is really getting the youth and telling them about the opportunities about um, there's a gentleman at Waverly High School he said he's thinking about possibly you know going to um, like uh, being a trainer like um, mm-hmm. uh, physical athletic tra- trainer yeah, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. where you don't necessarily have to go to college for that sure I've heard, you know um, one of my goals to do before the end of this year before 2018 is up is um, Jasper that's with Utah mm-hmm. Jazz yeah. mm-hmm. um, I want to you know reach out to him yeah Jasper has a great story just to let my guy know and I think that's just important for us to give examples Mm -hmm. to the kids Mm -hmm. you know to say hey oh you know what I know such and such let's see if we can try to get him on the phone to say hey these are the type of grades you need to go to D1 for athletics or for Mm -hmm. you to get in this type of profession this time Mm -hmm. so it goes back to what you said earlier is us um, us using our resources and network Mm -hmm. to if we know a kid to say hey I, I don't have I don't have a you know I don't have D one I don't have D two D three I don't have mm-hmm. none of that type of playing experience mm-hmm. but I have plenty of people that do right whether it's D one D two played overseas things of, and I can get the information I can get the information and let you know how much work they put in mm-hmm. in high school um, mm-hmm. I know with some of the kids I always uh, I use um, Justin Ingram as a reference sure mm-hmm. high school for the most part didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Didn't see him out at any, you know, friend's house on the weekends. You know, I was, you know, high school, whether it's drinking or doing, you know, dumb stuff mm-hmm. at that time period. He wasn't doing any of that. Right. You know, he was locked in a gym, mm-hmm. you know, and, and still. And I also, uh, last year, Kenny Brewer mm-hmm. came out of Waverly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll praise so right now. with him all the time, you know, uh, which yeah, I love. We always talked about him that he couldn't, what, chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> That's true. Um, and so I always use an example with uh, of him. You can be cool. You can be handsome. You can have the grades. Cause I think he was a what National Honor mm-hmm. Society mm-hmm. student, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right, young man. And now you know whether he could have definitely played D two, but he got a D one offer. Mm-hmm. To, I don't know if it was track and football or regardless. Mm-hmm. He's there playing football, doing something that he loves. Right. Still, I'm sure, excelling in other areas. Sure. Mm-hmm. And exposure, too. You know, when you talk about information, one thing I will say is, you know, the young people can have so much information. There can be information overload, but I think mm-hmm. you kind of alluded to it earlier, Jody, when you talked about, you know, being able to see someone like you and know about what you've accomplished, you know, mm-hmm. at Sexton and in your career. You know, but now, you know, what we talked about earlier with Coach's Culture and what really inspired this, and when Keith and I sat down some time ago, was this movement to really increase, you know, the quality of the sport experience for young people. And I right. always talk about this. I give a little plug to the Community Foundation of Southeast Michigan and the Aspen Institute and also the Ralph Wilson Foundation because the founder uh, of the foundation was the owner of the Buffalo Bills. And right. He mm-hmm. is uh, sharing some of his enormous wealth over a period of time and we're fortunate to be a part of right. you know that movement to help, you know, increase the quality sport experience. And last thing I'll say on that, you know, the region Southeast Michigan, which is about seven counties all the way up until just about Ingham County, uh, received a grade of about a C plus as it relates to the youth experience and what young people are saying their sport experience is like. So Mm -hmm. we're part of a train a trainer type piece where we're hoping to train coaches and give them some great information that can help them dealing with the millennial athlete. Now, uh, Dr. Dan Gould, who's an outstanding sports psychologist, world renowned, you pick up any sports psychology journal, anything, you'll see his name. He sits with us on this committee and this work we're doing and we're going to 
be putting out uh, some information as far as some resources. So now we talked about information. We talked about resources. We talked about you and your professional development being able to go from inner city urban school to a very, you know, uh, sophisticated elite uh, school like Lansing Catholic, if Mm -hmm. I can say that. You know, how do we get coaches who have been coaching for a long period of time or maybe not to be able to accept this information we're trying to share with them, knowing that it's coming from a well-researched place, it's coming, you know, um, highly vetted, et cetera, et cetera. But how do we be? How do we penetrate the coach's mindset to make someone say, "Okay, I'll go to that event. Okay, I'll open that link on the website. Okay, I'll look at that video. I'll do that survey, et cetera, et cetera." What do you think about that? That is the most difficult question <laughs> that you can ask. Jody, we brought you on I, to bring I, it together. I, you supposed to I'm, just say it. I'm in serious. A soundbite, Listen man. to me. <laughs> Listen to me, man. That is the most difficult question that you can ask somebody because mm-hmm. me personally, I come from a place where I want to be the best. Right. I want to be the best. So when I'm coaching, like I'm going to do above and beyond what I feel like is needed to put my kids in position to win. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm willing to stay after. I'm willing to work with you. I'm willing to do this. Everybody doesn't have that mentality. Mm -hmm. Some people do it because they want to, you know, get the couple extra dollars. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, let's just keep it real. Do cash. I, I literally just put this on social media maybe a month ago that coaches have to do a better job of sharpening their tools in the off season. How can you expect your kids to go to the weight room and get better sure. as improve. athletes and improve, improve right, and right, come back right. next season better, but point. you're not willing to do that as a coach. When there's plenty of clinics, there's plenty of a lot of things. I remember when we had um, the football clinics for the MHSAA mm-hmm. at the Lansing Center. Right here. Right here. Right. And we had literally four area schools of high school coaches right. there. Wow. Wow. No youth coaches there. So one thing I think and about. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Well, I was going to follow up with that. You know, one thing I think about, and Keith, you can share as well. You know, I, I feel that the coaches have a level of vulnerability they're not willing to share. Mm-hmm. That if I show up at something, that means that I don't know it all. And I know the cliche is, you know, you shouldn't act as if you know it all, mm-hmm. but that's the, the, the sense I get when I do my work as it relates to sports psychology consulting and being around coaches, whether Hall of Fame mm-hmm. or, you know, Pee Wee League. Mm-hmm. There's a level of vulnerability because, you know, you don't want to put yourself out there. You mm-hmm. know, so how do we kind of, you know, nudge or push or encourage people to be a little bit open to do just like you said, to try to get better, to try to improve? Um, I would say the OGs, Mm-hmm. The ones who have established have a you know career established you know resume mm-hmm. like my you know myself I'm, I'm not even forty yet and I've had thirteen years of you know coaching experience six years of basketball experience and I'm not even forty yet sure That's but okay. I'm still a sponge mm-hmm. and the more that they see people who like for instance Coach Ahern uh, at Lansing Catholic he's in his seventies wow he's already a Mid Michigan. Hall of Fame football coach. Wow. He's always at clinics. Wow. He's always at clinics. He's always trying to put his staff in position so that that they can put themselves out there to be better. So that's a characteristic of yeah, the so program. Yeah, mm. so more people who have been established need to get out. Because if you're a, a guy, a lower guy on the totem pole, let's just say, sure. coaching-wise, sure. um, when you start seeing these guys who have been a, a, out here and established, you're like, well... He's out here doing it. How come? Why? Why, why should not be out here sure. doing it? I don't really know much of nothing. Sure. And, and trust me, it's a lot of people out there that don't know nothing. <laughs> but you give them their props because they're working with the kids. Sure. You know what I mean. But on the knowledge scale, you're like. There's no reason for a kid that's been, you know, going through a program for a middle school and by the time they get to high school in their position, they're still struggling to be in a three point stance. Wow. Like the crazy. little fundamental things that I shouldn't have to waste time so doing. Were they not taught that? No, they weren't yeah, properly taught. Yeah, sure. Pro- sure. The little things right, that right. you're supposed